Arg! Sebastian bowed to me quickly before exiting the room, closing the door behind him. <laughs> As the sound... <laughs> Shut up, Sophie! <laughs> Shut up! Shut up, I can't read my lines! As the sound of his footsteps disappeared, Sophie burst into laughter. <laughs> what all had happened while I was away? Were you trying to seduce him again, ma'am? <laughs> Sophie. What? Sophie. No. Sophie. That was hilarious, ma'am. <laughs> Sophie, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I glared at her once again, making her stop and bring her laughter to a soft chuckle. <laughs> so, ma'am, I brought some sweet sandwiches and tea for you. Strawberries with a fresh hazelnut spread. <sighs> I can't, I... <sighs> Don't you <sighs> sandwiches and tea me? Oh, wow, thank you for ruining my moment that I was having. My pleasure, ma'am. Oh, sh sure, sure it is. Go, go barge into someone else's business. <sighs> I sat back down at my desk and watched Sophie place down the plate of tea, sandwiches and tea in front of me over the tray Sebastian had brought me. <clears throat> Any fancy mail today, ma'am? Ah. Uh, talk about mother. Yeah. Well, my mother's coming home today. So I have! The kitchen hands are going crazy at the news! They already know. Of course! Abby practically memorises your mother's schedules, that strange kitchen woman. Well, it's kind of a job to. I mean, she has to prepare meals and that would directly affect her schedule. Okay, fine. That is true. So strange. Anything else? Yeah, could you fuck off? Uh, um, joke about suitor. I have a new suitor. Ooh, a new suitor! What's his name? What's his name? That's a very odd response. Isaac Newport. Newport? As a Newport law affairs? You've heard of Newport? I mean, why wouldn't you have? You're a simpleton who goes about town outside with the people. <laughs> You're damn right I have. They're a new lawyer family coming up from out of nowhere. Only the peasantry like me know about them, though. They specialise in helping poor families with houses and such. Is that so? How droll. Or dull. I, I tried to say dull and droll again. Uh, it was uh, it was a smash up. Sorry. That was very interesting, almost. The Newport family was a new family to look forward to gossip about at parties and events. Hopefully there would be enough talk about them to ignore me. I wasn't a fan of the parties the rich families around me hosted. Anything else? Let's not tell them about the note. No. I sighed and enjoyed my snack. The tea was almost perfect and the sandwiches were very sweet. But I appreciated Sophie's work. Despite it being a menial task, she did it with love. Or whatever it is so, she has in cockney body. What are you going to wear for your mother when she arrives? Oh god. I sat in silence for a moment, contemplating on what to wear. I had many outfits, but I wasn't about to put on a fashion display for my mother. Stopping my snack, I looked to Sophie and thought What dresses do you suggest? Well, you can always wear the white one your mother bought from France. Then there's also the red one from Spain. That one looks good on you. Red or white. It was a simple choice, but I almost felt like laughing at the choice itself. Something about it was hilarious to me, and I couldn't put my finger on why. I finally made up my, mo my own mind and said... Oh, God. <coughs> okay. Now, let's see... White symbolizes purity, and red, red could mean any number of things. I, 
I'm, uh, I should go with the red dress. I don't know if Sebastian would like the red dress or the white dress. Obviously, I'll look really, really good in the red dress. Like, because it's... Red's kind of a sexy color. I know, my boyfriend likes red on women, too. So... <sighs> Fuck it, I'm wearing the red dress. <laughs> Ooh, very fun, ma'am! Won't your mother disapprove, though? She hates it when you wear red. Why the fuck would she buy me the gown, asshole? She hates it when you wear red. Oh, no. Um... Why would she buy me the gown if I can't wear red? Why would she buy it for me if she doesn't like it? For fuck's sake. And it's from Spain, no less. She doesn't like it when I wear red. Uh... <laughs> uh... No, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm sure. Sophie nodded and got out my red dress from the closet. As long as you're sure, ma'am. Yeah, fuck you. Let's get you cleaned up, ma'am. Then we'll get this dress on you. <coughs> uh. Getting into dresses was a tiring process. First I had to clean, using an unnecessarily large bath to wash in. Then I had to be dried, which required both me and Sophie to do it in a reasonable amount of time. After that I had to powder and put on my underclothes, which included a corset. Yeah, Sophie! You're trying to kill me! Just a little more, ma'am! Your mother would kill us both if we don't do this right! Corsets were a pain. Actually, I like corsets. I mean, I've never worn one, but it seems like it would be really nice. Your back would be perfectly straight and it would be kind of constrictive, but I don't know. Then we finally got to put the dress on. It was, an e it was easy to slip on and it only took Sophie a minute to tie it up to fit me perfectly. <laughs> I got another achievement. I don't know how I'm getting achievements right now. <coughs> I stood in front of my large vanity mirror, checking out my dress. I smiled at my choice. It was a lovely dress with satin ruffles. I felt incredibly attractive in it, feeling the desire to flirt and mingle run through my thoughts. Sophie quickly found a red rose and tied it up into my hair. Well, maybe I have made a wrong decision. <laughs> maybe. You look so pretty, ma'am. Men would fall to their knees for you. Thank you, Sophie. You're the best. Sophie smiled and bowed to me graciously. I turned back to the mirror and stared at myself a little longer, wondering what Sebastian would think of it. It was indeed eye-catching, and it made me feel incredible. <coughs> the sound of horses made me quickly look away from the mirror to look at my window. I rushed over and looked out to see a large carriage stopping in front of the house. Who's that? I don't recognize the carriage. Oh fuck, please don't let it be Newport. I I don't either. Ah, uh, where the fuck is my water? Holy fuck. Hold on. <coughs> Don't look at me like that, cat. I need this. <coughs> I stared at the carriage a while longer, unable to tear my eyes away. Who is visiting us, and today of all days? The door of the carriage opened, and out stepped a handsome man, looking to be around my age. He was dressed in a casual suit with brushed hair and an anxious smile. As per his protocol, Sebastian stepped out of the mansion and greeted him. They spoke to each other briefly before Sebastian escorted him inside. What did this man want? Ah, uh, ma'am, could it be the new bot son who sent you that letter? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Sophie, for pointing out the fucking obvious. Huh, Isaac, why would it be him? Why would he even come, other than the fact that obviously he's chasing me? He's come to court you! Oh my, this is exciting! Shut your face, Sophie. I quickly looked back to the carriage, trying to piece that logic together. He did wish to meet with me, but why in my home? Why come to my home? Why was he that desperate? Or was he that desperate? I sighed and ex exited my room with Sophie close behind. 
I felt the obligation to greet him creep into my gut, so I followed it all the way to the main lobby. <laughs> Sorry. Just... Okay. <clears throat> I stepped into the lobby to see the man and Sebastian conversing to one another. At the sound of my footsteps, however, they stopped and looked at me. Sebastian seemed surprised at my outfit. Did he like it? I looked at him and gently tilted my head in confusion. <coughs> <laughs> he liked it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the directoral cue probably let read, Try to clear your throat sexily. <coughs> Sebastian quickly shook his head and cleared his throat. <laughs> Sophie stifled another giggle. Mr. Newport, may I introduce the current lady of the house, Miss Beaumont. As I was introduced, I climbed down the steps of the granite staircase. I reached the bottom and walked over to where the two men were waiting, uh, were awaiting me with Sophie two steps behind me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Allow me to say you look absolutely stunning, Miss Beaumont. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Newport. I presume according to my butler. Yes, Isaac Newport. It's a pleasure to finally meet you at last. I just got your letter today. What the fuck? He held out his hand, wanting me to place mine in it. Did I want to? My mother wasn't around, so I didn't necessarily have to be polite to that extent. Dude, you gotta be polite. I mean, you can say no gently. You flatter me, thank you. <laughs> he looks jealous, and I got an achievement. I placed my hand in Isaac's, watching him smile gently before bringing my hand to his lips and brushing his lips over my knuckles. A gulp barely caught my attention, causing my eyes to quickly look over and see Sebastian staring at my hand intently. Oh gosh, he's not very subtle. What was he gulping for? Might I ask why you are here? Oh, well, I was in town and I was passing by your estate, so I decided to come by and possibly meet you. Obviously, it was a good choice. I see. Well, I'm afraid I usually deal with scheduled meetings, so I'm not sure that I can entertain you. Oh, no, I, I wasn't insinuating anything of the sort. I, I merely wished to stop by and meet you, that's all. That's good. Now get the fuck out. Ah, I understand. Well, since you did stop by, allow me to offer you some tea. <coughs> I looked back over my shoulder at Sophie, who quickly nodded and stepped forward ahead of me towards Isaac. Would you follow me to the drawing room, please? I'll prepare some tea and bring it as soon as it's ready. Thank you so much. <laughs> I bit my tongue, so f f which was really dumb because I mean, that hurts. Ah, ah. Okay. Sophie was definitely a great actress around guests. Sophie and Isaac walked away towards the drawing room, leaving Sebastian and me alone. I let out a sigh. Is something troubling you, my lady? No, I'm just surprised. I'm flustered, <laughs> if nothing else. <clears throat> no, I'm just surprised is all. Sebastian nodded, standing at the ready for any instruction I had. I looked in the direction of the drawing room and I bit my and bit my lip. I didn't want to sit in there with him, especially if my mother was coming home today. Who knows what she would think? <clears throat> just my luck, however. I turned my head to the front door, hearing another set of horses. Sebastian, please check who has arrived. Yes, my lady. <coughs> Sebastian quickly walked over and opened the door to see it outside. Your mother has returned. I felt my heart stop. Was my luck just terrible today? Sebastian quickly exited the front doors to assist my mother out of a carriage. I stood, knowing that my mother would want me to be at the lobby waiting for her. 
I felt frozen, unsure of how to explain the second carriage to my mother, who was very quickly on... Ah, excuse me, I burped. <coughs> ah. Ah, okay. <coughs> I felt frozen, unsure of how to explain the second carriage to my mother, who was very quickly on her way inside. It was a suitor, but I didn't want her to get the wrong idea. At last, my mother stepped into the lobby with Sebastian carrying our bags almost effortless, effortlessly behind her. <coughs> ah, there you are. Punctual as expected. <laughs> my mother quickly stepped up to me and looked me up and down. I wanted to see how she would respond. I wore red instead of white, but I was 17, almost 18. I was old enough to make my own decisions. Why are you wearing the red dress? Because you bought it for me? To show respect? What the fuck? I grimaced. I wanted to wear a red dress, Mother. I should have you march back to your room and change. However, I don't have the patience to argue with you about this. I sighed silently. I was never going to please her. Now, can you explain to me why there's another carriage in the front? I had to be calm. She had to understand that I was not interested in a suitor, nor did I invite him. Isaac Newport wanted to visit today, Mother. He was in town and decided to stop by. And where is he? In the drawing room, Mother. I have no time for guests. I have much to do, and I won't have you entertaining guests without me. My mother turned her head to Sebastian. Escort him out. Yes, Madam. Sebastian gently placed my mother's luggage down, away from the door, and quickly left for the drawing room. Now, have you been keeping up with your studies? Yes, Mother. Have you been practicing the piano? Yes, Mother. Perfecting your handwriting? Yes, Mother. Good. Then we can discuss. As she was about to finish her statement, Isaac and Sebastian entered the lobby, walking towards the exit. Here we go. Isaac stopped and bowed to my mother. Oh, hello, Lady Beaumont. It is a pleasure to meet you. It is a pleasure to meet you too, Mr. Newport. I'm afraid we have some business to attend to, so we cannot entertain you today. Feel free to stop by tomorrow. I understand perfectly, ma'am. Please, have a good day. Isaac bowed to my mother before smiling at me. And a good day to you too, Miss Beaumont. Ah, okay. <coughs> with that, he left and exited the mansion, with Sebastian closing the door for him. Mr. Newport, you say? Yes, Mother. He looked to be your age. Was he a suitor? Technically, he was. Yes, Mother. I couldn't lie to her. She knew how to see through lies. My mother stared at me in thought before walking past me towards the drawing room. I sighed and followed suit. <coughs> <coughs> we entered the drawing room drawn in MS paint, where Sophie was cleaning the tea Isaac was previously having. Leave the tea. Bring new cups. Yes, madame. Sophie quickly left the room with the used cup Isaac had, leaving me and my mother alone. My mother sat down, waiting for me to sit across from her in the empty seat. I quickly obeyed her silent command to do so, looking to her and setting it up as properly as I could. How old are you now? Seventeen, mother. Seventeen and <laughs> still unmarried. What am I to do with you? I bit my tongue. I knew better than to speak back to my mother when she looked talk like that. She had been hoping one day I would marry, but it was becoming futile. Anyways, I will be staying here for a couple of days <coughs> to deal with some in-town business. I expect you to entertain Mr. Newport properly should he return. This goes for any suitor, understand? Yes, Mother. The dinner schedules will be upheld as I am here. If you are not at dinner during the scheduled time, you will not eat, understand? Yes, Mother. Good. My mother was strict, but for a good reason. She wanted me to be a perfect lady, suitable for marriage and upholding a family. If I was a toe out of line, I would be lectured until I regretted ever disobeying. We drank tea, barely speaking to each other, before I was dismissed back to my room. 
I quickly stood, bowed, and left. Sophie followed behind two steps away from me. As I entered my room, I slumped and let out a tired sigh. So Mother's here. Wonderful. She's made it through the country again. Oh, come now, ma'am. You should be happy. Yes. So very happy that my leech of a mother has returned. Oh, joyous fucking day. Ha. <sighs>